In this video, we are going to explore Laravel Syncton. Understand how it works and know how to authenticate users to our application with Laravel Syncton using session-based or token-based authentication. In my example Laravel application, I have a protected route inside API.php route file. This route is protected using the Syncton guard. On the other hand, I have a login route inside web.php. This is a typical login route, not, nothing special about it. The user provide the email and password, we validate it and authenticate the user. What we want to do is allow a user to log into our application using this route and be able to make requests to our API using this route. My example application is hosted at laraveltest.web. If we take a look at the browser console, we don't have any cookies stored. So let's try and make a request. First, we are going to make a request to our protected API route, which is API slash user and see if it works. Of course, we are going to get an unauthorized response because we are not authenticated. Now let's try to call our login route. We are going to provide the email and password of an existing user and we are going to run the request. The request failed with a 419 response. This is a CSRF protection response. Because we didn't send any CSRF token, the application refused the request. Now we are going to make a request to a special Syncton route, CSRF cookie. This is a route built in Syncton and it's available in any Laravel application using it. It's going to generate a CSRF token and send it back with the response as a cookie. When we run the request and head over to application, check the cookies, we can see that there are two cookies now. One cookie for the CSRF token and another for the Laravel session. This one holds the special token for CSRF and this one holds the special session ID. The token for CSRF protection, it's not HTTP only. That means a JavaScript application running in the browser will be able to read the value. So what we are going to do is copy this value and send it with each and every request going forward. Now we are going to send the login request one more time, but this time we are going to include the CSRF token in the form of an XXSRF token header. Now the request passes. If we look at the response coming from the request, we can see our authenticated user data. So now let's try and make request to our API. This request failed while it should work. And the reason the request failed is that Syncton doesn't know that this domain or this origin should be considered a stateful origin. For that reason, Syncton is not going to attach the middleware required to run the session in requests going to our API from this origin. What we need to do is go to our environment file and let Syncton know that this is a stateful domain. Now let's try to make the request one more time and the request finally works. We can see here that we have the authenticated user returned in our response. Because this request is a GET request, we didn't have to include the CSRF token header in our request. However, if it wasn't a GET request, we would have to include the CSRF token. Otherwise, the request would fail with a 419 error. So now we learned that in order for us to authenticate our application with Syncton, we have to set the CSRF cookie first and also make sure that our API is listed as a stateful domain. Now let's try to make the same using a subdomain. First, we are going to make a request to our API to make sure that there is no authenticated user in place. The request will fail as expected. We need to call the CSRF token route to get a token. Now we get a course error. Because we are sending a cross origin request, we need to configure course. So let's head to course.php configuration file and make sure it is correctly configured. We can see here that cross origin requests are only allowed to our API endpoints. We are going to make it allowed to every endpoint. And now let's try to run the request again. The request now passed, but we can't see any cookies set here. And the reason for that is that we are not including cookies with our request. Now let's try and make the request again with the cookies included. And now the request will pass. And if we take a look at the cookies, we can find the cookies sent with the response are set in the browser. 
and again because we are making a cross origin request we have to inform javascript to send the cookies with the request and set the cookies coming from the response in the browser now let's try and make a log request with the credentials included and the csr if token set and the request will fail with another course error the reason is that we are including the credentials however in our course configurations we set the application to not support credentials so we are going to set this to true now let's make the request again and now it works now let's see if we can make a request to our api with an authenticated session it's failing again because we didn't set the stateful domains configuration so let's head to our environment file and update that and then we make the request again and now it passes we can see in the network tab that the response we have includes the required user. And now let's try to make the same requests but from a different origin, a completely different domain, horizon test.web. And now let's try to make the CSRF request. The request passed, but if we look at the application section in the browser console, we cannot see any cookies set. And the reason is that because we are making the request to a completely different origin, the cookies are going to be tied to this domain so if we are sending it from this domain the cookies will not be included and the reason for that is that inside our session.php configuration file we have the same site policy set to lax and that means cookies are only going to be included if the requests are originating from the same origin so this covers most of the confusing errors that we see when we try to authenticate our application using laravel sanctum However, one thing I need to add is that when using Laravel Synctum, you need to set a specific session domain for your application. And for our example, we're going to use dot dot laravel test dot web. And this will cause all generated cookies from our application to be tied to this specific domain. Now, if we make a request to this domain using the same domain or any other subdomain, the requests will include the cookies. Now that we have seen how session authentication works in Synctum, let's try token based authentication. I'm going to add a new route to our api.php configuration file to authenticate the user through an API endpoint. It's going to validate the user credentials and then create a token if the credentials are correct. So let's make a request to this login endpoint. And as you can see, we don't have to include the credentials because it's a stateless request. And the request will pass. And if we look at the response, we can see that it includes a token. We can use this token to make requests to the, our API endpoints from now on. We just need to include it in an authorization header as a peer token. And now the request will pass and we get the expected response. If you are using token based authentication to authenticate a mobile application, for example, storing this cookie or storing this token in a secure place would be easy. However, if you are making the requests from a web browser, you need to store this token somewhere where JavaScript cannot access it. If you store it in the browser local storage, any JavaScript running on the web page will be able to grab the token and use it. So another more secure option is to store it in a special cookie. But that's a topic for another video. For now, I hope you understand how Laravel Synctum works and how you can authenticate your applications using it.